On Christmas Day, I took Daisy to the dog park, which I do twice a day, almost every day. But on Christmas Day, the dog park was packed with dogs, and Daisy was so excited to run around and greet all these dogs she had never met before, and she was having just a wonderful time, and I thought to myself, gee, all these people must be taking their dogs to the dog park as a treat for Christmas, like a Christmas gift, right? Because there's normally not this many dogs and people at the dog park, and so as Daisy's going around have a great time greeting all the other dogs, I was just going around greeting all the people were there and I was saying Merry Christmas and do you know that only one man said Merry Christmas back to me most people at the dog park weren't wearing a mask and I got blank stares or even animosity now I wasn't trying to make some big political statement here. All I was doing was wishing people a Merry Christmas. And what has happened that just my doing that greeting gets such a negative response? from so many of the people there because the reality is, is I thought to myself, you know, if I ask most of the people there what their, what their faith was, don't you think most of the people there would have identified themselves as Christians? Because that's my reality. Most of the people I bump into, they, you know, they claim the title Christian. But it, could it be that they are just cultural Christians? What's a cultural Christian? Well, that's somebody who's born into a Christian heritage. And maybe they've come to learn a little bit about Jesus Christ. So they have a, an intellectual relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, that's how I began. I, I, I was born into a Christian family, and, and my parents sent me to religious education so that I could learn about Jesus. So I had some head knowledge about him. But it wasn't until later on in life that I really came to know Jesus Christ, not just from my heritage and not just intellectually, but actually came to know him because the challenge with cultural Christians is they're basically Christians in name only. But you couldn't identify them if you saw them in a crowd. You wouldn't be able to point to them and pick them out and say, well, there's a Christian or there's a Christian. And maybe that's the problem. Maybe the problem is people are not bumping into real devout Christians. And what's a devout Christian? A devout Christian is a person who's continually nurturing their relationship with Jesus Christ and integrating that relationship into every aspect of their lives because that's what I've done I'm nurturing that relationship and integrating it into every aspect of my life. And because of that relationship, it makes me wonder why not everybody's a Christian and living that faith and nurturing that relationship. And how do we nurture that relationship? It's very much doing like Simeon did in the Gospel of Luke. It's being in a relationship with Jesus in a very real way. How? Well, we know that the Bible says Simeon was devout. And we certainly know from the scripture reading today, he had a great relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was guiding him and guided him to the temple at that time. So he didn't just know God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. He came to meet God in Jesus Christ. And what did he do? Took him into his arms. And that's how we're called to move from being cultural Christians to being devout Christians, is by nurturing a relationship with Jesus Christ. And how do we do that? Well, just imagine Jesus becoming human, one of us like a baby, 
and taking him into our arms. Couldn't we use that as a definition for prayer? Welcoming Jesus to us in that very real way, embracing him, cuddling him, nurturing him. That's how we nurture our relationship with Jesus Christ is through prayer and then spending some time in God's word, listening to Jesus speak to us through the Bible and then also by affiliating with other devout Christians in a church so that we can encourage each other and also share with each other the great grace of Jesus Christ, most especially that's available through the sacraments the sacraments that bring us closer to the Lord. And then also, as we become gathered with other Christians, they can be inspiration to us, both present and past. We can come to see that Christian witness in others, that Christian witness in others. You see, for us to move from being just cultural Christians to devout Christians, we need to become holy Christians. What does it mean to be a holy Christian where we can hear? In St. Paul's letter to Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 and verse 17. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. You see, being a devout Christian, it isn't just what we do, but how we do it so that people will be able to point us out as being different, being different. And think of ways we're called to do that right now. How can we witness what our relationship with Jesus Christ means to us in these difficult times? How can we witness that we remain a people of hope, that we're not discouraged? that we believe. How can we witness it in our families? How can we witness what it means to share heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience? For that is what the world needs right now, is a good Christian witness. A good Christian witness so that people won't be uncomfortable being around Christians or being greeted by Christians, people will find inspiration and hope. And so as we celebrate this feast of the Holy Family where we're really celebrating the presentation of Jesus, we're celebrating when Jesus is presented to the temple. And so, Joy, if you could go back a slide so that we can see in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 22. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary, took jo Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Mary and Joseph give us a great Christian witness of how they presented the Lord and who received the great gift of that presentation, Simeon and Anna. And Simeon, his life was now complete. He was able to see everything that he was looking and longing for. We are called, like Mary and Joseph, to present the Lord in a very real way to everyone we meet with heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. <laughs>